What's up, PYA? It's great to see you guys. Uh, how many of you are enjoying the weather? Come on, be honest. I love... They, they, Southeast Texas doesn't do anything right, I feel like, sometimes, where it didn't even ease us into this. It was like 88 degrees yesterday and 60 degrees today. It didn't even ease us into it. But I enjoyed it. I got to, bright and early this morning, I got to be at Starbucks, and it was freezing, and it felt good. I had my hoodie on. Anybody else wearing your long sleeves tonight just because you can? Come on. Come on. Got to. Got to. And uh, this is my favorite hoodie. It's my most comfortable hoodie. And uh, I'm ex did you just boo the pastor? What just happened? You get out. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, it's, my, it's my best hoodie. It's my most comfortable hoodie. And uh, that's what I want to, uh, my hope for you tonight is that this is an experience um, that at some points is very comfortable, where you feel like it's home, where you feel the grace, the mercy, the goodness of God. But I also pray that tonight also kind of feels a little uncomfortable, places where you've gotten accustomed to kind of in a routine, and maybe God is calling you into something greater. Amen? Anybody ready for what God can do tonight here at PYA? Anybody with me? Awesome. Let's get right into it. Uh, Matthew chapter 5. Uh, we've been talking about what it means to be the church, to not simply go to church, but to be the church. And tonight we're going to look at what Jesus calls us out to be. And uh, so let's read this in Matthew chapter 5. He says, you are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand. And it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Let's pray. God, thank you um, that you have revealed yourself in the written word of God, um, that we have, um, we have these treasures preserved through us through human history, God, that we have uh, historical records of, of, of your son, Jesus. And so tonight, as we look at uh, what Jesus meant when he said that he'll build the church, God, I pray that it, it, it comforts some of us who are afflicted and it afflicts some of us who are comfortable. God, we love you. We place this evening in your hands. If you love Jesus, say amen. 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 So there are three powerful um, analogies here talking about the church that help us understand both our purpose and our potential as a church. Uh, and remember, a church is not a building. It is a body. It is a group of people who call Jesus God, come together in oneness, and say, hey, we are a church. So that's not simply going to church. It's being a church. So there's three analogies in here that help us with our potential and our purpose. There's a city, there's light, and there's salt. So the first talks about salt, the second talks about light, the third talks about being a city, and then it goes back to light. And so what is Jesus trying to say here? And that's what we're going to kind of dive in tonight. So let's zoom in on verse 16 um, of this passage, and it's going to help us understand what Jesus is trying to say. So he says, in the same way, the light, the salt, the city... All these analogies. Let your light shine before others. Everybody say these next two words with me. So that. Now, when you're reading scriptures, the so that's are so important because they give you purpose. That, that it gives you the why. It gives you the purpose behind what Jesus is trying to say. We should let our light shine before others so that, and here's the purpose, they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. So anytime you're reading in the scriptures, circle those so that's, and then you're like, hey, I'm about to get the reason why. I'm about to get the purpose behind what God is asking me to do. He's asking me to shine my light before others so that they might see your good works and give glory to God the Father in heaven. And so this answers the question, well, why are we salt? Why are we light? And why are we a city? Which so that others would give glory to God. Now, notice it doesn't say there, you are to do these things so that you make your name great. No, no, no. You do these things so that we make his name great. Amen? We're doing this so that he gets the glory, which means the weight, which means the credit, which means the awareness, which means the source, the, at, uh, the attribute of, of what the thing that we did was, this good work, so that God gets the glory. The way I heard this growing up was, you know, it's called the disease of me. 
the disease of me. And too many times we find ourselves living with the disease of me, or we have the case of the me's. You're like, what are you talking about? Well, I'm saying the disease of me basically says, I read everything through the filter of this has to do with me. Uh, when I read my Bible, the Bible is all about me. It's not. When I go to the church, uh, uh, when I go to church, church is all about me. You know, have you ever gotten the case of the me's to where you go and you're like, man, I wish they would sing my favorite song. They're sitting in my seat. I wish someone would come and talk to me, right? We get caught up in this because uh, our sin nature is selfish. And we, we kind of have this, this uh, default place in our lives to where we are constantly, we find ourselves coming down with a case of the me's being like, hey, uh, why didn't you have a good time? Well, the pastor didn't connect with me. The songs didn't connect. They weren't my favorite songs. Uh, my, me, I. Well, I, I'll go if I have nothing else to do. What God is trying to say here is this is not about you. Don't find yourself coming down with a, with a case of the me's. Because the reality is, is you are supposed to die to your comfort so that someone might find the comforter. So that you might be able to, to do a good deed, do a good work, so that someone would look at you and be like, that can't be just them. There must be someone greater, something greater. And they find comfort in the, the comforter. So we are to die to ourselves. We are to pick up our crosses. We are to follow Jesus. We can't make this about me. We can't make this all about I, 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 what's best for me. We can't come down with the case of the me's. And what I'm trying to say here is, is the so that, why are we doing these good works? Well, it's so that we would glorify God. Well, this is a beautiful picture of the church. And here's the definition that I want to give to you guys tonight about what the purpose of the church is, the why, the so that. The church is supposed to be the visible manifestation of the kingdom of God. And I love this line. The place where the values of eternity operate in history. Our jobs as members of the church is to give a preview of what the kingdom of heaven is going to look like. To give someone an experience of what eternity will feel like in the fullness of relationship with Jesus Christ. But to give it to them in a picture. To give it to them in a preview. We are the visible manifestation of the kingdom of God. And I love this idea because... How many of you, let me say it this way, let me give you an analogy, because uh, analogies help, right? Because we're kind of getting this idea, and Zach's looking at me in the front row like this right now. He's giving me the Jimmy face. Is that the Jimmy? <laughs> He's interested. I like it. All right, so how many of you, when you go to a movie, you love the previews? Anybody love the previews at the movie? Anybody with me, you're not, you're not into the previews, because you're like, I, if I know I'm going to see the movie, I'm, when I was growing up, what we used to do with my dad, it's kind of like a Banks family tradition, is... When we would sit through the previews, we would have like a rating system. So it'd be like a whole line of us. I have two brothers, mom, um, some friends or whatever. We'd be in the movies, and they would show the preview. And at some point, you would just, without saying anything, you'd put a thumbs up. If you're like, yeah, let's go see that movie. I'm in, right? Or you'd give it a thumbs down. If it's a chick flick, no, I'm not going, right? you put your thumbs down. Uh, sometimes you would give the thumb sideways. You're like, eh, I don't know. And we're all looking down during the previews, kind of doing these things. It eventually evolved into like two thumbs up, two thumbs down. We'd even make a box for Redbox. It involved in all sorts of different stuff. Like, it's not worth the $8 to go to the theater, but it is worth the dollar to go to the red box, all this sort of stuff. But if you think about it, a preview shows all the best parts of a movie for what purpose? Right? To get you interested enough in something so that you would go experience the full movie, so that you would go be a part of the entire thing. And in many ways, that's what the church is. Because we aren't in a perfect relationship with Jesus. One day we will be in a full, perfect relationship with Jesus, and it will be beautiful, and we call that the kingdom of heaven. But Jesus says, continue and begin to pray now. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, and we can preview the kingdom of heaven here on earth for people here and now. We can be the vision, the visible manifestation of the kingdom of God. We can bring eternity into history and help people have a, have a vision of what that looks like. Here's the problem. There's a famous quote that says, I love your Christ, but I don't like your Christians. And that's where the church has fallen short. It should be. The Christians give me a picture of what it looks like of the fullness of what relationship with God looks like, 
of the fullness of what I was created to live like. And I love it. I want to be a part of it. Not only in the preview season while we live here on earth, but in the fullness one day when we're with Jesus forever. That's the church's job. This place should be, should be a beautiful place to where people come and they are the most lifted up. This is the place full of the most joy, the place full of the most mercy, the place full of the most grace. And when people come in here, they're like, I can't wait to get back. Why? Because here's what I believe. We were all created for the kingdom. We were all created for the kingdom. Because God created you, God created you to live within his kingdom. And when we sinned, we decided to live outside of that. And that's why we call that being lost. That's why we call that uh, being, yeah, being lost. You, you have not found your way yet because you're trying all these things to fill that void that's within inside of you. But one day you come across a group of believers who call Jesus their God, who are living out the way that you were created to live. And it's magnetic. It's powerful. It's beautiful. And you sit there and you don't know how to put it into words, but you say, I want to be a part of that. Why? Because you were created for the kingdom of God. And that's what the church should be. Here's the problem. We have a difficult time being that type of a church. And remember, it's just a preview. God is not expecting us to be perfect. It's not expecting us to be the fullness of it. Because one day, everybody will get to experience that if you believe in Jesus. But for now, we need to put our effort into being the church. So tonight, how can we be the church We need to put the effort into replicating the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. And so when you read things in the scriptures like the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. Say, is that what our ministry is like? Is that what our church is like? And remember, your church is not a building. It's this group of people. When you look around this room, this is the church. Is this church marked by forgiveness? Is this church marked by grace? Is this church marked by mercy? Is this church marked by coming alongside one another and lifting each other up and speaking life? Is this church marked by people who will look at you and say, I can't wait for you to become the person that God has created you to be. And you know what? I'll be beside you from here until there because long obedience in the same direction because I know I need a Christian brother or sister and I hope you do too. So let's come together, join together and get after it. Is that what this place is looking like? Because I want to be a part of something like that. Do you? Anybody? Because I I want to be a part of something like that. And that's where I say if each of us individually can say, you know what? I'm going to be to others what I want them to be to me. I believe that there will be a tipping point to where there's more people trying to be to others what others are being to them. And no matter what, we love like Jesus loves us. We give grace when we feel like we shouldn't, but because God has given so much grace when we feel like we didn't deserve it. That we actually have long, deep, meaningful relationships. And we, we actually don't just go to a small group, but at some point we become a small group. Can I get an amen on that one? We become a small group. And here's the idea, because again, we go back to this idea of a light, right? You are a light. And here's what I love about the idea of a light. A diffused light has no power, but a focused light has tremendous power. A diffused light has no power, but a focused light has tremendous power. Anybody as a kid, right, you get the magnifying glass and you get the the leaves. I know you guys don't have a ton of fall leaves around here, but growing up in Pennsylvania, we would rake those leaves. We'd get them in a giant big old pile, and we would run, and we'd jump in those things, and there'd be bugs in there, and it'd be crazy. It'd be super fun, right? But if you got, anybody ever get a magnifying glass? What is the magnifying glass doing? It's focusing the light, and you can burn a leaf that way. You know, the power of light is, with, depending on how focused you can get it, they have these things called lasers. Anybody hear of a laser, right? Not just the laser pointer that, like, everybody remember back in the day the coolest thing was to get those little laser, but maybe me and Tasha only. Anybody with me? Is that a too old thing? You know, you get the laser pointer, and you're like, okay, PSA, no lasers, please. And the, anyway, but you know they have lasers that are, are focused light to the point to where they can cut through steel? They can harness the power of light to the point that it can cut through steel. I've never seen it with my own eyes. I have a hard time believing that, right? Like, how does this same light being harnessed and focused? But it does. It's the the power of of focused light has tremendous, tremendous power. And like a light, 
the more focused we are as a church will determine the impact that we have on our city. Because if we're diffused, if we're all over the place, then we will have a minimal impact. But if we can come together and be a focused church, going in a direction together, we can make a huge impact, not only in the lives of everybody around us in our church right here, right now, but also to the ones that would come and join this church. Because when they see our good works, they will notice that there's something different about this group of people called PYA in Southeast Texas and say, I want to be a part of that. They may not know they were created for the kingdom, but they want to be a part of the grace, love, joy, peace, and all of that. Focus light. So what is our focus light, Right? Pastor Reg has been giving it to us for the last uh, month and a half. It's if we have a great commitment to the great commandment and the great commission, we will be a great church. If we, uh, this body of believers, can have a great commitment to the great commandment and the great commission, we will be a great church. And I love the way that that's stated because it's pretty simple to remember. It's pretty simple for us. Hopefully, as young adults, we can remember something like this. And, and what is the great commission? What is the great commandment? Well, it's simply this. This is our focus as a church. This is our focus as PYA. It's, hey, we want to be great at loving God, loving people, and making a difference. We want to be great at loving God, loving people, and making a difference. This is our focus. So the question is, and this is what I want you to talk about in your small groups tonight. We're going to go a little bit heavier towards your small groups tonight because I want there to be an ample amount of opportunity for you guys to say, hey, who in this small group is willing to be the church? Who's willing to, to be the church to each other regardless if someone's being the church to them? To be the first one to stand out and say, hey, I want to be great because I want to have a great commitment to the great commandment and the great commission because I want to be a part of a great church. Do you want to be a part of a great church? Well, then be a great church. Own it. Own it and be like, I get this opportunity. I get this opportunity. And you guys even have a better opportunity because here we are today in 2018 when three years ago the ground and the foundation was laid when there was only 10 to 15 people meeting in a small group at the little apartment across the way. And now we have 150 people consistently on a Tuesday night. You guys get to be a part of this. And the potential is greater today than it was three years ago. Because remember last week, if Jesus is still building his church, he's still building you. He's still building his church. And I believe 150 young adults on a Tuesday night is just the beginning. Anybody else with me? But it's going to take individual efforts. All of us saying, all right, I'm going to do my part. Because if we can get focused, we can have a tremendous impact. And here's what I love. Jesus prayed that we would be focused. Jesus prayed this. There's this beautiful section of John. And I could be a Bible nerd and get super into it. But it's, it's the setting is the Last Supper. And he's, up, uh, he's at the Last Supper. And he gives this entire discourse, which the very center point of the discourse is in John 15. Uh, it's recorded over multiple chapters uh, throughout history. And in John 15, he talks about, hey, if you want to you bear fruit, stay connected to me. If you want to have life and life to the full, stay connected to me. That's in John 15. And at the end of his entire sermon, it's him and his disciples there at the Last Supper supper, as recorded in John 17, he ends it with a prayer over his disciples. It's called the high priestly prayer, is what it's called. And in this high priestly prayer, this is what he prays. He says, he says, Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. And he's saying, look, keep them as one. Focus, make sure that they stay focused because they are powerful. They are tremendous. There's tremendous potential in the, them being focused and being brought together in unity, being brought together in oneness. Keep them together in one. But continue reading this. He says, do not, I do not ask these for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. And here's what I love. He's building his church. He's looking at his disciples, and he says, keep them as one. And then as he continues to pray, he then says, I'm going to be still building my church 2,000 years from now, and I want Pastor Jimmy to be able to read this and say, Jesus prayed for us, PYA, in 2018. He says, I do not ask for these only here at the Last Supper, but I also ask for those who will believe in me through their word at PYA in 2018, that they all may be one. Jesus prayed for you specifically that you would be one, that we would come together and be focused. 
just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they may also be in us. He's talking about the oneness that the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, they all experience this oneness, and they're effective in that way. And he's also saying, I want this church to be one. But he doesn't end there. Throw the, throw the very last part of that. He says, I do not ask for these only. And then he says, here's the reason why I want them to be one. What are those first two words? Come on, everybody together. What are those first two words? What's the purpose of us all being one? So that the world may believe that you have sent me. So that the world would believe that Jesus is God. So that the world would be able to experience the kingdom that they were created for. The relationship that God created for them. But Jesus doesn't stop there. He says, the glory that you have given me. Right? Remember, we're doing this to glorify his name. He says, I've given them that they may be one, even as we are one. I and them and you and me, that they may become perfectly one, perfectly focused. What are the next two words here? So that. The world may know that you sent me and loved them even as you have loved me. What is our purpose as a church? What is our purpose? Our purpose is to be a picture. That we would paint the picture of what it looks like to be in a relationship with God. To be fully known and fully loved. To paint the picture of what it looks like to love each other. Not perfectly, but to the best of our ability, full of grace and love and, and value and speaking life and looking for the good in each other and drawing that out of each other and, and, and not just kind of infighting and division and, and, and all that sort of stuff, but the reality of us coming together and lifting each other up and mourning with those who mourn, rejoicing with those who rejoice, spurring one another on towards love and good deeds, not letting us to just stay comfortable, but getting to a place where we can get uncomfortable so that others would experience the comforter. That's the picture of the church, the visible manifestation of the kingdom here on earth. So that, and I love that that's in there multiple times in Jesus' prayer. Anytime in scripture you hear something multiple times, anytime we do anything, if I were to tell you three times to do something, you would, you'd be like, okay, I get it. Yeah, well, I'm trying to emphasize that to you. That's all Jesus is doing. He's emphasizing it. He's saying, oh, look, I want you to remember what it means to be focused. I want you to remember the power and the tremendous point of what we're trying to do. Your potential and your purpose is to make him known. So here's where we're at, guys, for tonight. How do we avoid the disease of me? And how do we live selflessly like Jesus and love God, love others, and make a difference? And how can we work that out? I think the very first place you need to start is in your own heart. You say, do I want to be a part of something like that? Because you know what the only prerequisite, prerequisite is a big word, but it's a college word, right? The only prerequisite for being a part of the kingdom is believing that Jesus is God and King. And when you do that, you become a part of the church. You get to be a part of build. God will build you as he builds his church, and you get to be a part of building this church and owning your part, owning your peace. So you start personally. And then from personally, I want you to go to your small groups, and I want, you know, in your small groups, I want you to begin to talk about it and be like, hey, how can we be the picture of the church, the picture of the kingdom to the other small groups at PYA? And they'll look to us and be like, we want to be like that small group. Why? Well, because that small group is so full of grace and love and peace. I want that in our small group. And then it becomes infectious and magnetic and powerful. And then we as a, as a ministry, we as a church, a little C church in the grander scheme of the big C church, we get to be a place where the kingdom, where people can experience the kingdom. They can have terrible weeks. They can go through terrible life circumstances. But they can come to PYA on a Tuesday night and experience the kingdom. PYA can gather and go to their schools and go to their workplaces and they can experience the kingdom. And that's what God has called us for. Amen? So why don't you stand? That's it for me tonight. Because here's the beauty of it. We can invite them into a preview now. We can invite them into a moment now. But here's what we know. A moment 
turns into eternity. And we get to be a part of connecting people's hands with God's hand. And not only changing their life here on earth, but changing their future for eternity. And more than that, not only we get to change their life here on earth, most likely they experience the kingdom and then they become a picture of the kingdom here on earth in a relationship with Jesus. And then their families and their friends want to be a part of the kingdom. And then their family and their friends experience the kingdom and they give their life to Jesus. And then they begin to say, hey, I want my friends and my family to experience the kingdom. And it goes on and on and on like a domino effect. And it becomes greater and greater and greater. And our small acts of faith in the hands of a big God, we begin to see how God is building his church through us, living out the kingdom. And here's the beauty of what it means to be one. And I'm going to give this to you, and we're going to talk about it next week at PYA. The beauty of being one is not, this, is not being one is not being the same. God's not asking you to be the same. He's asking you to be one, to be uni, un, unified, to be unified under the name of Jesus. Because we are many members. The hands don't look like the feet. The arms don't look like the legs. They may look similar, but they're not the same. And God says, I want you to bring in your differences, the different, different ethnicities, different genders, different economic statuses, different, different uh, gifts, different talents, different opportunities, different relationships. And it's the power of being one and being focused is being one. And we have so much to offer. We're gonna talk about that next week. But for tonight, can we focus this in and say, hey, how can we be a church that loves God, loves people, and makes a difference? How can we be the visible manifestation of the kingdom of heaven here on earth? How can we bring eternity to operate in history? And let's create this thing together. Let's allow Jesus to do a great work within us because Jesus believes in you because he handed you the keys. The question is, is do you believe? Let's pray. God love you. Thank you so much who you are, what you've done. God, thank you for believing in us. I pray that as we personally, through the next few songs, get to internally wrestle with the idea of, of being the church. God, would you inspire us tonight? by the power of your spirit, knowing that you are with us and that you empowered us to do it. But God, would you inspire us individually tonight over the next few songs? personally, so that after the music, when we get to one of our small groups, God, would, would there be leaders, I'm not extroverts, leaders, whether they're introverted or extroverted, would there be leaders here tonight who will stand up and say, I will be of the small group to you that I want you to be to me. God, let your kingdom come. God, so that after small groups, when we inevitably go to a restaurant here in town, we take the church to our city as a picture of what it looks like to live this out at Lamar, to live this out at uh, our jobs, to live this out wherever we go throughout this week. Your kingdom come, your will be done. May we be a, may we be a church that's marked by the kingdom so that others would want to be a part of what they were created to be a part of. God, you do it. We're here to be a part of it. Lord Jesus, amen. Amen.